Hello everyone, I hope you are doing great. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to make this basic but very smooth platform movement. We'll approach it from slightly different side, so you will be able to learn not only Unity, but also good programming practices. This particular setup can be downloaded directly from the GitHub repository linked in the description. Please feel free to use all the assets and code for your own projects. And let's get started. In order to enable the collisions for the ground, we add Tilemap Collider. Make sure to check the Used by Composite checkbox, as Composite Collider will be the next component we'll be adding. Composite Collider is a special optimization for tile maps. Basically, Unity, instead of checking each individual tile for collisions, will be checking the whole shape as one. Composite Collider automatically adds rigid body 2D. Make sure you change the body type to static, as ground in our example will be static, that means not moving at all. In order to enable physics for our character, we need to add rigid body 2D to it. There are three adjustments we need to make. First, we change collision detection from discrete to continuous. This will cost us a little bit of performance, but will prevent many strange artifacts like bouncing effect when colliding. Secondly, we need to freeze rotation in Z-axis. This will prevent the rotation from being affected by a physics engine. And lastly, we need to adjust the gravity scale so the movement feels a little bit snappier. Now we need to add 2D Collider to our character. I like to use Box Collider instead of Collider with the round button, because it is more predictable with squared tilesets. We adjust it to fit the character size and boom, the basic setup is ready. Before we start writing our scripts, let me introduce you three amazing programming concepts. Firstly, enums. Enums are nothing more than sets of different values. They often represent state or mode of something. Not only they make code more readable, but also prevent issues, which can occur during comparing different types. How many times have you compared two strings to each other just to realize one of them is mistyped? The most common example of widely used enum are colors. Secondly, interfaces. Interfaces are nothing more than a promise that a certain class will contain certain methods. Imagine simple shooter where you have boxes and barrels and windows which you can shoot at and destroy. Sooner or later, we'll have more objects we'll want to destroy. This is perfect place to use interface. We can promise to the bullet that if it hits an item marked with interface destroyable, it will have method destroy. So the box can break and the glass can shatter, but from the bullet perspective it does not matter, because it knows it can call the destroy method. And lastly, extension methods. Sometimes you wish certain type had a method which it doesn't, and that's where extension methods become handy. You can simply create a static class with static method and this way add extra functionality to the external type you work with. Fantastic, let's write some code. Let's create platform movement script and open it in the editor of choice. For me, it will be Rider, but you will be completely fine using Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. A little bit of cleanup and let's start with creating some types which we'll be using later. First, I create a directory for all enums. Then I create our first enum, Access. As we are working with 2D game, will be very often working with X and Y axis. Also, there will be times when we'll have to convert axis into name of the axis known by Unity. Unfortunately, we cannot add methods directly to enums, but that's where we can use extension methods. Next, I'm creating directory for interfaces. Our first interface, iInputProvider, will contain all methods related to gathering input. It will not only allow us to get the input from player now, but it will also allow us to simulate the input from artificial intelligence in the future. 
That means we will be able to use the platform movement not only for our player character, but also for all the enemies that will be able to walk and jump like a regular character. At this moment in our iInput provider interface there is only one method defined. This method expects our anim access as a parameter and will return a float. Now I create a directory for different input systems and our first input system which will be player input provider. As it has to be added to our Viking character, it has to extend mono behavior. Of course it will be also implementing our interface. This will force us to implement the get axis method. In this method we'll simply use another method provided for us by Unity. Basically there are two methods get axis and get axis row. They both expect name of the axis, horizontal or vertical. We can simply convert the enum value using our extension method. Get axis and get axis row turn value between minus one and one depending on the input. The get axis method returns the whole spectrum of values and the get axis row returns only the values minus one, zero or one. Let's get back to our platform movement script. I'm adding the attribute require component for both rigid body 2D and I input provider. This will not only serve as a reminder for me in a while when I completely forget what the script does and how it works, but it will also make Unity attempt to add the components it recognizes like rigid body 2D when I add the script to a game object. Then I create two private variables to store those components and in start method I'm grabbing those components and storing them. We'll need a variable to store walking speed. I'm going to mark it with two attributes, serialize field which will expose this variable in the Unity inspector and header which will add nice header allowing us to group variables together. It's good practice to keep all the code interacting with physics engine in fixed update and that's why we'll use there our apply horizontal movement method which we'll be creating next. In order to calculate the velocity that the character will be moving with we need to get the input from the player and multiply it by walk speed. Then we need to assign this value to rigid body's velocity. It's not too convenient that we have to provide x and y axis when we want to change only one of them. That's a perfect place for introducing yet another extension method. Let's create extensions folder and rigid body to the extension class. First of all we mark this class as static. That means it can have only static methods. Then let's create our public static set velocity method. Remember that the first parameter has to be the type the method extends with this keyword before it. Then we add parameter for axis which we want to modify and float for value. We'll create a variable new velocity to which we'll assign a new vector to. To the axis provided to us via parameter we'll assign the new value. The other one will contain the value from old velocity. That means it will stay unchanged. We'll assign it to the rigid body velocity and we are done. Now we use the method on our rigid body 2D and the horizontal movement is ready. We'll add player input provider and platform movement scripts to our character and modify the walk speed to 7. Let's press play and check if our character can move left and right. Fantastic! Time to add jumping. We need to extend our iInput provider interface. We'll need a method get action pressed, which will take as a parameter our custom anim input action and return boolean. Next, we'll create our simple anim with just one value, jump. Of course, in the future there will be more values. Because we extended our interface, our class player input provider will be required to implement the method get action pressed. The implementation will be a little bit tricky. As you remember, all actions that interact with physics engine should be happening in fixed update. Fix update is executed close to constant frame rate. Because of that, there is a chance our input will be lost. That's not the case for a regular update method. For this implementation, I'll simply use the fact that key up and key down events cannot happen at the same frame. I'll create a set and in get action pressed I will check if the set contains specific input action. I've done a silly mistake. The method should return a bool, not float. In update method we attempt to capture the input. Depending on the player action, 
pressing or releasing button will add or remove the action from the set. But first, we need to know which button is responsible for jumping. We'll create a variable to store the name of the action from the input manager. It's quite easy to check what keys are registered under certain actions. You can simply go to Edit, Project Settings, Input Manager and all information, all actions and their names and their buttons are over there. In the Capture Input method, we add the action to the set if the button is down or remove it from the set if the button is up. Then in our Platform Movement script, we create Apply Jump method. In this method, we simply check if the input action jump was requested and if so, we add velocity to the Y axis. Of course, we want to store the jump force as variable so we can easily modify from the Unity inspector. We set the variable to 10 and boom, we are ready to test jumping. Fantastic! You may think we are done, but not yet. Our implementation has two serious problems. First, the jump force is applied as long as we keep the space button pressed. And second, the character gets stuck on the walls when pressing against them. Let's start with the second issue first. It occurs because Unity applies a default physics material to our rigid bodies. Those materials have a significant friction applied to them. So the fix is pretty straightforward. We just need to create another physics material with no friction and add it to our character. And the character doesn't stick to the walls anymore. For the first issue we'll have to write a little bit of code. Let's start with creating interface iCheck. This interface will contain only one single method, check, that will return boolean. This way it will be very easy to replace one check with another. Now we create a concrete implementation of this interface, box check. Our box check will have to be added to the game object so it has to extend the mono behavior class and of course implement our own interface. We'll use it to check if our character is on the ground. In order to do that we simply check if box of certain dimensions at certain position overlaps with ground. Because we will be modifying the size of the box directly from the Unity inspector, it would be good to see real-time what is happening. That's where onDraw Gizmos method will come handy. This simple but very powerful method allows us to draw custom shapes in the editor. Now we create empty object and add our script to it. Because of the power of Andro Gizmos, we can see the red rectangle in the middle of the character. We'll definitely need this check for more than one thing, so let's make it a prefab. Now we rename our check to ground check, we put it at the edge of character collider and adjust its size. It's very important to verify if it's actually sitting exactly on the edge of our collider. We are only interested in the information if the character is standing on the ground. We don't want to check if it's standing on a enemy or a pickup or something else. In order to do that we simply create another layer and call it ground and assign it to our tilemap. Now we only have to specify on our ground check object that the collision mask it is interested in is ground. Let's get back to code. We need to create a method to check if the character is actually on the ground. We call it is grounded. In order to do that, we have to get the reference to the ground check object and the box check script on it. Then we simply return the value of the check method from our isGrounded method and use it in apply jump. Now we only need to associate the ground check object variable with the actual ground check game object. Make sure the ground check object is a direct child of your character. And voila! The platform movement's ready. In the next tutorial, you'll learn how to create those amazing animations and how to apply them to your character. 
please let me know what you think about this tutorial in the comments below. Also, if you think this tutorial was helpful, please subscribe to the channel and like this video, this will definitely help me grow. Love you, speak to you soon and bye bye.